Harvard, Yale, Brown, and even Dartmouth have reinstated their SAT requirements for people applying in 2024. Why is this happening and how does it impact your applications for fall 2025? My name is Meacham, I'm your college counselor, and today we're talking about the return of the SAT. There are four main reasons why we're starting to see universities go back to requiring standardized testing. And the first one is actually pretty simple. Most of these test optional policies were temporary in nature. Universities never really planned to go test optional forever and ever like most of them just did this in response to the pandemic and once people were able to go back to taking tests they went back now before I get into these other reasons I want to talk about what this means for you as a student I think it's pretty clear you should definitely start preparing for the SAT and you should take it at least once and it's entirely possible that more universities are gonna switch back to requiring the SAT this year so it would be better for you to have it and not need it the need it and not have it. Because the last thing you want is to have to reconfigure your college list because a few universities change their minds about their test policy. And if you are gonna prepare for the SAT well, then you need more material than what we've got already. Blue Book does now include up to six practice tests, which is great, but even that is not really enough for you to get a lot of practice on the digital SAT. And that's why I recommend you check out the SATcrashcourse.com. They're sponsoring this video and they've been an awesome partner to work with for the last like six months. Love everything about the SATcrashcourse.com. It's got a perfect Blue Book simulation the interface is impeccable. Every single feature works. You can mark questions for review. You can use eliminator mode. You've got video explanations too. And you really cannot beat the SATcrashcourse.com when it comes to the value of their offer. Seriously, check out the comparison review video I did. For that same $100 that you would spend on one test at Princeton Review, you can get way more at the SAT Crash Course. In fact, right now they have a package of 10 tests for $200. And it can get even better because if you use the promo code SCORE at checkout, you get another 20% off. When you use the code SCORE at checkout, you're literally getting your practice test for less than the cost of a McDonald's combo meal. Like, you're not going to get a better deal. And let's get back to talking about why this SAT is coming back. There were still some big names, though, that seemed like they were going to stick with the test optional regime. And that's including major universities like Caltech that put a five-year moratorium on all standardized testing. What's crazy is four years into that, Caltech just recently announced that they're going to bring back the SAT requirement, even though this year was supposed to be another test optional year. In fact, it's such an abrupt decision that if you Google Caltech test policy, you get very conflicting results. Like the first result here is from their original statement where they declared this moratorium. And then just a little further below, there's a new post that tells you that you're going to have to present the SAT this year. Some universities are going back on their promises to stay test optional for a while, and still others that were extremely proud to be test optional, like Dartmouth, are coming back to requiring the SAT. So there's more going on here than just, you know, policies expiring. With testing being required at more universities, you might think that you need to present a higher score, but actually data from previous years might be lying to you. Test optional policies kind of put those good but not great students into a tricky position. I did a little bit of a comparison with different colleges and looked at the data, and it turns out that there are a lot of universities that saw their numbers creep up during the test optional phase. A lot of people didn't want to send their scores unless they were super confident that they were really good scores. Let's say you're a student looking at the University of Tennessee and you've got a score of 1150, which puts you near the 25th percentile. In a test optional world, you're probably not going to send that score, but if it is required, you probably do. I looked at the low 25% because I feel like that's where we're going to see more of this affected. Like, obviously, the, the good scores are still going to arrive, but it's those scores that are on the edge that maybe won't. In the case of Tennessee, that low 25% shot up from 1140 to 1180 because, again, those people that were down at the bottom didn't want to send their scores when it was test optional. The same thing happened at the University of Georgia. They only had one test optional year, but you can see that their numbers went up, and then as soon as they returned to requiring tests, it went right back down to normal. And for a good, like, measuring stick, look at public universities in Florida, which were not allowed to go test optional because Florida is always doing things the Florida way. Look at how much their scores dropped 
during the pandemic. And that's because during that year, there was only like one or two chances for students to take the SAT. This policy was designed to help people, right? To remove some of the stress and anxiety around testing and instead has created more anxiety for those students who are on the bubble. So by requiring SAT scores, people will just have to send what they have. And at the same time, that's going to bring down the numbers a little bit, and that might make people feel a little more comfortable about sending their test scores. The third big reason here is the number of applications. Test Optional did create an increase in the number of applications per student. If we look at pre-pandemic levels, the average person had six applications. After the pandemic, it went up to seven. Cat, can we not? Okay, no. Net increase in applications is kind of a problem if you're a big public school that has somewhat tight funding and you don't have a lot of resources to just suddenly expand your admissions department. Like that increase in application volume makes it hard to review every single student. Perhaps though the biggest reason why the SAT is coming back in a big way is because it's a really good predictor of academic performance in college. The SAT has been criticized a lot for being nothing more than an indicator of your family's wealth because people who have more money take the test multiple times, they get better preparation, and therefore have higher scores. And that is still true. At the same time, it does also correlate really well with academic performance. UT Austin did an interesting study of its own internal data. They went test optional, and conveniently, about half the students applied with test scores and about half did not. UT Austin found that the students who who applied with test scores had an average GPA 0.86 points higher than those who didn't bring test scores. That is a very big difference. That is like way more than a standard deviation. Again, I don't know anything about math, but that sounded like I did, right? So trust that. Without the SAT, people were looking strictly at GPAs, but because of things like grade inflation, those are becoming less reliable. And if the SAT is a better indicator of academic performance, than the GPA, then the test optional experiment is probably gonna die within the next few years. But that's not to say that every school is gonna suddenly switch back to requiring the SAT. I think a lot of universities are happy with their test optional policies, especially universities that aren't the most selective. Like if they're gonna admit you on good numbers anyway, and they don't really care if you get like 1500, then test optional is perfectly fine. And there's still gonna be the entire freaking state of California that goes test blind and refuses to look at test scores because because of the way they feel they influence equality in the admissions process. At the same time, I think we're gonna see other universities take different approaches. Yale's policy is not actually strictly a test required policy, it's test flexible. Test flexible basically means that you have to present some form of standardized testing, but it doesn't necessarily have to be an SAT or ACT score. If you have IB or AP exams, you can send those instead, and then you don't have to send the SAT. You could also send the SAT. You could send the SAT, ACT, IAP, and IB. And if you're in Florida, you could even send the CLT. And if you want a video about that mess, leave a comment below. If enough of you people care to learn more about the CLT test, I'd be happy to tell you all about it. Given that it's not widely available internationally and it's still not that popular in the United States and that it's kind of psycho, I don't really plan on making one unless you really care. So the bottom line is, if you are a high school junior or you're a high school sophomore, you should start preparing for the SAT now. I've been to some of these universities like Purdue and Georgetown and FIU and they're gorgeous. They're wonderful institutions and like I think it would be a shame if you missed out on some of those opportunities just because you didn't want to bring a test score. Now I know I have said on this channel several times that the SAT is not as important as it used to be and I believe that remains true. There are still a lot of universities that are just test optional and they're not going to require you to present an SAT score this year. But if you want to target those top best of the best schools because you need a lot of financial aid or just because you really need prestige in order to validate your existence or because your parents are really Asian, like then you need a good SAT score. And that's always been true. And with anything in college admissions, the scene can change really quickly. So you need to stay aware of the latest trends. And while a couple of years ago, I definitely feel like test optional was really beneficial for a lot of students. 
I can see now that some of the trend is reversing. And so you're going to want to bring a good test score anyway. So we're in a situation where it behooves you to have a test score. And if you want to make your test score the best it can be, check out the SATCrashCourse.com. Use the promo code SCORE at checkout to get a nice fat discount and help me out a little bit. And also check out the resources that I made for students. I put together a bunch of materials. I have class recordings available from my classes that I live streamed here on YouTube. Like, I've got material out there to help you get a better score on the digital SAT. So you can check out that stuff as well. And thanks for watching the channel. I appreciate you. I'll see you next time.